Yes, how much for that wonderful introduction. It's lovely to be here. And I don't know why I sat all the way at the back. <laughs> that music was incredible. It wrapped around your heart. What a privilege to hear it. Mrs. Mother, hail. Mrs. Mother, blessed art the window panes. Oh, keep us from the lure of dust. Forgive this hankering for distant lanes. Give us brave archangels of morning sun. Mrs. Mother, hail the dull bulbous scratched spoons. For we must lift the humility of soup. Or oh, deliver us from the sin of bread. Excuse the rough palm, its trespassing of skin. Mrs. Mother, oh, let us learn the hollow curse of curdled pans, the evil celibacy of the washing up, the everlasting weight of a dowager's hump. Lead us not into the drowning of knives. Mrs. Mother, oh, pity thy uncovered fruit. Pray for the sake of one small brown bruise, for the baptism of potatoes, for the hour of their laying bare, the mining of sprouted eyes. Mrs. Mother, oh, speak as one who stoops to crumbs. Glory for the cumber of a used womb. Have mercy upon the quiet chapel of upturned cups. Suffer the bowls foam, the smell of grass. Mrs. Mother, oh, rise before such nights of bleak glass. Light without end and light and light and light and forever. There shall be the sight of birds, invisible tastes of water. Amen. Hood. I'm not going to stick to the path, not when there is mystery in the wood, not when I see such flowers. I will sing to their gathering, snap the stem beneath the most beautiful heads. My grandmother might find comfort in a memory of meadows. On my arm, the basket swings like a wicker crib with its brittle baby of wine and cake. In the dark of the bowls I hear breath. It clouds from the gloom of a throat. It smells of gore and gouging. Here I am, gaudy in the forest like a bloom of blood. Here is my unexpecting flesh. I see a window sick with tallow light, the murder shadow puppet of a beast upon the pane. I should not have gone in, but I was captured by his growl of song, lost my skin to the roughness of his tongue. Stick to the way you know, my mother said. Inside the forest are bones. Poor blackbird crumb. It flew into the window, bang, poor thing, and fell to the ground like a dreadful leaf. Poor blackbird moat, so warm and me so big, we threw our house in front of its flight. It broke upon fraudulent glass. This is how we close ourselves off from the world and still think we see everything. Come, make your not dead, not dead ascension. I said so warm and soft, 
still, it's alive, it's alive, I believe, just stunned, just all, the wind knocked out of its divine breast, the look gone from under its wings. I tried to barter the price of its spark for the weight of my head, a small expense, one beautiful life for this blown shell so that it might rise like a knife through the blue skin above. I held it close, poor blackbird tomb, craw to throat, so light I think it might be the same weight as my own heart. It did not move. Where was its air? Where was its tilt? Poor blackbird crumb, so perfectly made for sky. I cannot lie down so quickly and be done. I am glad it will only hurt today and not tomorrow again, again. The doomish milk ruined its beady sight, blunted the keen of its yellow bezel eye. My palm became a gentle church. I made a charm to wake a life. Dawn, break, sing, mist, feather, magic, weather, sigh, hop, toe, babble, bright. I tried to voice the flowing back to halted blood. I tried to make it cry back alive. Ways in which I came to be a thief. I stole the worship of birds like a jealous priest. Counted their songs into a miser's hoard. Lay like a slab beneath their flight. Plucked the ground of feathers the shape of knives. I stole the view of lurching pines and filled my sight with spears. Saw them flinch against the harrowing wind and tack their needles to pale air. I stole the kitchen's robe of dismal breath so I could pity the schism of one dropped cup and cry for soap, clung to spoons like throttled cum and taste light served upon the brittle wheel of plates. I stole my mother's history of bones carried the weight of her lowery face, suffered my eyes to the wraith of her gaze, hooded her ghost with the mimic of her own frayed lids. I stole the mirror's fear when I broke upon its beveled edge, blinked away her caustic green, opened my own shade of sky. But now, the Snow Queen has set her haunting loose. She says, somewhere in the world it is always winter. Her voice is the gale that breaks upon the gable end. Her spite is a snuffed candle curling like strange breath. She says, you and me, we do not know what love is. Put a palm to your chest and feel the last beats of a dying bird. Consider your own victric bones, dwell upon their marrow of ice. Gerda, close your door against a storm of broken glass. Sweep the step of settlements of spelks. Seclude yourself behind a window's solid pond. Bathe and let flows of bubbles claim your bloated form. Wish you had the courage to drown. Bind your home with keeping spells of cold. Open your mouth and show a hail of teeth. She says, pile against the skirting board as if you're adrift. Crawl the tundra of the bed sheets as if you are lost. Try to be some version of a perfect wife. Fuck that you are riding shafts of ice. I'm going to finish with this poem. How the river takes whatever you pray. I heard a faraway chapel of birds, pure as the call of distant Sunday bells. They flew above the liquid, supple tongue as it rolled a wet hymn across feral land. 
from which to answer the call of this cordial font. Dip some part of my own self in unwhole to be made whole. Every path, every twist, every road, everywhere I place my feet seems like a pilgrimage. I'm walking to see if there's a heaven somewhere. I was planted and then I was ripped up by the root. I lost my place in the soil and now I remember how I used to meet the lapping edge to swim. I tried to find the place where I used to venture down, looked for relics of my tread, but winter had already been and spring had moved its newly living way and the overwhelming flood had changed the landscape of the banks. There was no record here that I had ever passed. I saw the grey priest of a heron fly overhead like a slow angel bearing the crucifixion of its splinter feet. I came here for a cure, but I cannot smooth my terror down. My skin is blistered with odd tones, curves with cold. My mind carries you softly, just like the water bears the mild burden of ruined leaves. I kneel to sink my hand into epiphanies. I see you. I hear you. I know that you are there. I love you. I love you wherever you have gone. I sent you a drowning prayer. I saw the river and cried. Thank you.